this fish. So I'm gonna get this guy right back in the water. Spring comes late to Cape Cod. While the rest of Massachusetts enjoys sunny 70 degree days, the Cape, being surrounded by 40 to 50 degree water, stays cold and wet and often socked in by that infamous fog that Henry Thoreau considered a serious objection to visiting or living on the Cape. I don't feel quite that strongly, but I do feel that when the weather provides a clear day in early May, it's good for the soul to watch the sun rising over salt water. What's even better for the soul is catching the first striped bass of the season, and that's exactly what Chris Megan and I intend to do on this trip. In the springtime, the harbors, bays, and salt ponds on the south side of the Cape warm up faster than Vineyard and Nantucket sounds. For that reason, migrating stripers beeline for these waters, seeking the warmer temperatures and the bait fish within. Chris and I head to the entrance of one of these bays, hoping to intercept the schoolie bass riding the incoming tide. Oh, look, look, the guy's got one blowing up on him right now. We gotta get in the water. Jimmy, watch the way this lands. Yeah, incoming tide's just starting, should be perfect. I mean, clearly, we're a little late because we just watched that guy catch two fish. Oh, there we go. Oh, Jimmy, not oh. too late, buddy, not too late. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. Jimmy, top water, or should I just stay with uh, Chris, I'd go, I'd go top water, man. Why, why don't you change this out and I'll grab your rod. <laughs> what I like to do is come in right behind Jimmy. Yeah. Set, Chris, I've just... Oh, come on, get it, get come it, get on. it. I'm going right over the top, Jimmy. Oh, you see him swirling behind it? There you go. Nice, Jimmy. My first top water strikes of the season. Second awesome. cast, Jim. All right, well, I was built for speed, not for comfort. <laughs> and now I'm gonna change it over. Jimmy's already tight on one fish. Now that's not, oop, he popped off right there. It's not that bad, that was not that small a schoolie. You know, he was probably 24 inches or so. And the lure I'm using, it's a top water. It's made by a local guy. Uh, the company's called Fisher Magician. It's basically a tiny pencil popper. But I did switch the trebles out for an inline single hook and I crushed the barb. I may shake off some fish like that. I let the line go slack and he shook the hook, but uh, it's, it's a little bit easier on the fish, especially now uh, people are getting much more conscious about catching and releasing their stripers. They want to release them in good condition. So that's why I have the, uh, the inline single, the crimp barb, and uh, that's two casts and two blow ups, so I'm not going to talk too long. It's the first year that we have these, this new slot limit for striped bass, so ultimately that's going to be a good thing. You know, it's certainly going to let more of the larger fish get back, which is good. <laughs> All right. Just that dead stop. I stopped it for one second and he came up and smashed it. There's another fish breaking behind him. It's a beautiful fish. So again, in, in making sure this fish releases healthy, I'm not going to drag him up onto the sand. Oop, just going to Keep them in the water like this. That barbless hook came out nice and easy. Just lift them up. That's an absolutely perfect little striper there. He's got sea lice on him. He's probably one of the fresh arrivals we've seen. Beautiful fish. Oh, oh you smacked it out of the water. Jimmy, this little spook. Chris, that last one I had, I stopped it dead. Just, I didn't walking, have any hits. This one you're walking, Jimmy. That one there is a tactical anglers crossover. Decent class of schoolies around this year, Chris. There, there's a lot of those, like 22 to 25 inch fish, I'd say. And those are probably the fish from the 2015 year class. Which was a big class. Yeah, that was a, you know, the state of Maryland does surveys. Oh, I just missed one. 
the, oh, Chris is on. Right when it hit. Yeah, so the state of Maryland does surveys every year to see how productive the spawn was. And 2015 was a massive year class. And we've seen them kind of grow up the past few years. And these fish we're catching right now are probably from that 2015 year class. Jimmy, just like you said, this thing landed. I moved it two feet and stopped and it came up. I don't <laughs> think he's as big as that other one. So, you know, this morning when we got here, sun was just rising and I left the house. I, I want to say it's at 42 degrees. And here we are coming up on Memorial Day weekend. And it was 42 degrees, but after about a half mile, three quarters of a mile walk out here, that sun comes up, everything just starts heating up. A lot of times what I like to do is let Jimmy grab them. What that does, it locks up the other angler from catching oh, oh, fish. Oh. No, I'm getting them, I'm only teasing you. Yeah, Chris, so that one too, that plug also has that inline single hook with the crimp barb. Easier on the fish, for sure, but also easier on the angler. It seems like the schoolies are the ones that, if you're gonna get hooked by a striper, it tends to be the schoolies that do it, at least in my experience. Oh, take it easy, fella. Take it easy. Everything's gonna be good. Beautiful fish right there. Just a lot of fun. We're gonna go ahead and get him back in the water. There he goes. definitely be getting hooks, more hooks into these fish if we had the trebles on there. But Chris, it's, I mean, schoolie fishing just isn't what we're taking that seriously. You're just out here to have fun. You know? You're not gonna be able to keep these fish anyhow. It's unlikely we're gonna hook a keeper. Especially a keeper today is a slot limit is 28 to 35, but neither Jimmy or I are really looking to take any fish. We're just out here trying to bend, bend the rod. But uh, I can count right now out here where we're fishing, five other anglers that are all kind of either on the other bank or here. On our small topwater plugs, I've swapped out the treble hooks for inline single hooks with crush barbs. Chris and I miss way more fish than we hook, proving that my rigging is indeed more fish friendly. But seeing these small aggressive stripers smack the lure out of the water is almost as fun as catching them. Though, if I'm being honest, I might not feel the same way if these fish were 20 pounds instead of 20 inches. There he is. Jimmy, sixth time it works every time. <laughs> you know, it start, the, the migration here on the Cape it starts out, it's just kind of a little trickle. You know, there's some small schoolies show up and there's always a debate, is it a holdover, is it a fresh fish? And then all of a sudden you just have this big tidal wave of fish that comes in. And that's what we're seeing now. Beautiful little fish. I mean, when the schoolies first show up on the Cape, they beeline, you know, when they first show up anywhere, really, they beeline for the warmest available water. The open ocean water and the, you know, the bigger bays are gonna be a little bit colder. So they seek out these harbors, these smaller bays, and that's where they're going to find, one, more bait fish, and two, water that's a little bit more comfortable for them. And then as things warm up, once you get to this time of year, fish really start to spread out a bit more, but you still have tons of stripers stacked up in these estuaries. He's on a fan boat. Yeah, color-wise, for schoolies, I really don't think it's all that important. Um, white. You cannot go wrong with white. That's what I'm throwing right now. I actually throw a lot of pink in the spring 
And a lot of that is because one, schoolies will hit it just fine, and two, always hoping to find that weak fish. Beautiful little fish. This one, Chris, is definitely a class below those first ones we uh, we found. But even that little guy, no problem, sucking down that you know, six-inch bait. It's probably maybe a two-year-old bass, maybe his first migration. Got a lot of sea lice on him, and look at that tail, big broom tail. It's going to carry him up and down the coast, hopefully for many years. Color change, little lure change, and I want to go a little bit heavier on the uh, on the jig head, just because it seems like the current's picking up. This one right here, it's just a bubblegum colored Zoom Super Fluke, and it's not really a classic here on Cape Cod, but it is the just the most popular lure fish in the backwaters of South Jersey. Everything eats them. Everything loves this color: bluefish, fluke, stripers, weak fish. If you look at a lot of baitfish, they all do, you know, bunker herring. They kind of have a pink sheen to them in the right light. So it makes sense, and that may not be why this color works, it may just be that it's a loud color that gets attention. I know sometimes folks look at us and we go, geez, you guys, you always have great luck out there filming, and it's not that way. Sometimes you have to put in some time. We got out here this morning, I thought we would have had 12 fish each in the first 10 minutes. We were definitely getting blown up on, not necessarily hooking up as much, but that's fine. You had some blue fish that moved in, you got these Schooly bass that are in here, not to say there's not a keeper that's cruising through here as well, but you have an opportunity to get a weak fish throughout Southeastern Mass. There's actually been a pretty good push of them this year. I haven't really targeted them. I know Jimmy's targeted them. I don't think he's had much luck with them so far. Oh, he's very angry right now. I think Jimmy might be angry. It's all right. He hears everything. I can I, just tell that little curl on the small. I'm hearing like a bat. <laughs> there he is. There he is. He's, he's, I think it might be a weakie. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> Dude, they're starting to dial in on this, boys. Little paddle tail. Little paddle tail, slow retrieve. This is, I'm fishing right now, a little storm. White paddle tail, one of those pearl paddle tails. We got a little bit of mung moving in. The tide's moving in right now, and the mung's coming in with it. We've had a big northeast push the last few days, which sometimes can move some, some mung in here. Believe it or not, having 16, 17, 18, 19 of us in the office over the course of the of the uh, year, there's a camaraderie that you build and they're good friends of ours. And with what's going on right now with coronavirus is that we just don't see each other. And so you get an opportunity to get out and fish with Jim right now, get out and fish with any of the guys in the office. I miss them. I miss these guys. Finally, so I did that, that switch work. I think it was more than the color change. Definitely the heavier jig head getting down and being able to bounce bottom as the current picked up. That was probably the change that resulted in, in hooking up there. Chris, I think they're still there. I think they just kind of hunkered down. They're not going to feed on top quite as, as readily. It's beautiful. They've got so many different colors in them. They do have that little purple sheen that is such a fun size for this tackle. A little bit smaller than this. You overwhelm them with, with inshore tackle, but this guy, you can see he put up a great fight. And there he goes. I always think of this as, you know, the stripers coming home this time of year, but I guess everybody thinks their their home waters is probably the stripers home. You know, this that fish may be here for a little bit. He may continue north to Maine. He may hunker down in this bay all season. He could be a holdover that never really left. It's like just a uh, an island of mung. You see yeah. it right here? I just cast right into it. I'm getting knocked now, just casting up current, just kind of bouncing it down the channel. 
This is the elusive monkfish that Jim usually ties into when we fish together. Oh, I've been catching my share of that fish. <laughs> well, what I was saying with Jimmy hooked up on that fish is that, you know, having all the guys in the office, we get a, there's a camaraderie between the group that we get to just kid each other all the time. And working from home right now, you kind of miss that. So you get an opportunity to get out here and fish like this. It gives you an opportunity to just not only wet a line, bend the rod, but also catch up. Because with everything that's going on right now, most folks are working from home. Although nobody really talks to Jimmy in the office. He's kind of that lone wolf. <laughs> We've had a lot of great chips. Um, I'd say when we fished Delaware, Jimmy and I fished a lot of shows together, fishing Delaware. I don't know, I just, I listened. I listened to what Swiss was saying and dialed it in and just put on a small clinic. And Jimmy had a little bit of a problem with that. Chris, you can tell me you need to scratch your belly twice right now and I would do it. <laughs> you need to pat your head. Two times, right when it hits three o'clock. So. <laughs> there he is. I've never seen anything like this in my life. <laughs> <laughs> to see him get just frustrated, to the point that I put down my rod, release a fish. When I went to grab my rod, it was gone. And uh, I was like, Oh, did somebody pick up my rod? I look up Jimmy's fish with my rod because he thinks there's something different about my rod. Oh, whoa, whoa, just as I said Oh, no, that. keep talking trash. That's okay. I'll just be over here fi catching fish. <laughs> just as I said that. Yeah, they're, they're glued to the bottom right now. So whereas when we came out here at first light, they were hitting on top. Right now, these fish seem to, if you're not on the bottom, I'm not getting touched. perfect tackle for these schools. Like we said earlier, it's the same outfit we're using for Albies. This is an eight-foot rod. It's not a surf rod. You see it's got the shorter butt than a surf rod uh, would have. Well, it's rated for three-eighth ounce lures to one ounce lures, which is what you want to throw for these schoolies. It's got a little more weight to it. This is such a fun class of fish we've had we have around this year. And it's to be honest, we haven't had a lot of this the size lately. The schoolies we've had have been a lot of 12 to 16 inch fish. So it's nice to see these 22 to 24 inches because they really do, you know, that next size up really does put up a much better fight. We totally inhaled that pink zoom, but it's got the single hook on there. That'll come out no problem. It's not in the gills, right in the top of the mouth. And again, when you're landing these fish, especially the schoolies, if you're not going to keep them, no reason to drag them up on the sand. You know, that beats them up. You know, just leave them in the water. This is much easier on the fish, leaving them in the water like that. Yeah, so things went cold after we lost that topwater bite. And starting to dial it in again, that I switched to a uh, lighter jig, caught one small one, went to a little bit heavier jig head, and it seems like I'm back in the game. What'd you put on? You don't have to worry about it. Oh, I guess I'll notice it when I go to get it out of my tackle box later. <laughs> oh yeah, oh it's on, oh it's on. Do this like this. <laughs> nothing to see here, boys. Nothing to see. Oh. Oh, look at that lightning. Boom. I think I hit that guy. <laughs> I think that that stormer that I had was just a little bit too big a profile for these fish in here right now. Oh. Just slowly bouncing the channel. Oh. Oh. Jimmy, right back on. Get back on it. Starting to pick up again, boys. Starting to pick up. Yeah, most of these fish will probably be in this size range, but you never know, Chris. This this time of year. Oh. If I asked my mom, she would say that fish still counts. So that one counts. The fish that Jimmy doesn't even catch still count for 
<laughs> when it comes to... If I think there's a fish there, my mom will be oh, like, Ma. it counts, <laughs> you caught it. Eileen would give you credit. So May is one of the best months to be on the Cape for the fact that it's an awakening. And it's an awakening all over the Cape. Things start to turn on. You know, the haddock bite that started in April is probably still going on, but these fish have moved into closer in Cape Cod Bay to 80, 90, 100 feet of water because the water's still cold up in the bay. You can get these fish literally coming out of Plymouth, not with a real long run or out of situate. The bass move in. Oh, just got a whack there. And uh, so the opportunities just are, are, are plentiful. The freshwater fishing on the Cape is excellent as well. It's just, there's just so many opportunities. A little smaller one here. There he goes. You know, week before Memorial Day, small fish, schoolies just bend the rod, light, light tackle. If there is one thing I learned during the spring of 2020, it was how much I enjoy the social aspect of fishing. When social distancing orders were levied in mid-March, fishing was one of the few acceptable activities left. But instead of going with a group to the trout ponds or packing for a weekend at Chad Camp like I would have done any other year, I fished alone. I still caught fish and still enjoyed the time and nature, but I missed the camaraderie of fishing with good friends. In their absence, I realized how storytelling, trash talking, and lighthearted competition can be just as integral to a good fishing trip as the fish themselves. So it was an added bonus to catch these first stripers of the season with Chris, especially since I caught more of them than he did. But who's counting anyway? <laughs>